Hi, in this video I'm going to take a look and have a listen at the master of the song that we produced in the new song production series and I'll compare it to the final mix that I did in that series. And as part of all of this I will also explain why we used external mastering for this song and what the results were. So let's go! Welcome to episode 18 already of the new song production series, which is a series of videos in which I show the full production of a new track from start to finish for my band The Wash. Now it's been a while since the last episode in which I basically showed how I made the first dynamic mix of the track. And that has gone through a couple of revisions with the band. Our singer was also on an extended European trip, which meant that we could spend a bit more time than usual. There was no hurry in releasing this track, but we finally got it mastered now. So let's have a look at where we got it mastered. Now you may recognize this mastering studio from another video that I did on a previous song that we released. It's emastering.eu, which is a mastering studio in Arnhem in the Netherlands. And you can just send him a track or you can send him some stems or you can actually go there for an attended mastering session. So they have a nice mastering room over there, optimized for critical listening of course. And the gear list, well, it's some of the best of the best. This is all gear that you can only drool about as a home studio owner. Now we've had a couple of tracks mastered at this mastering studio for a wash already and we've always been satisfied with the results and even if we discover that we still need some changes in the mix because we only hear certain things after the song has been mastered the mastering engineer over there is always really willing to still make a revision after we send him a new mix i actually got to know this mastering studio via the youtube channel of yg studios a fellow countryman also from the netherlands because he had a video in which he compared some online automated mastering services with a real mastering engineer like we have over here. And I'll link that video in the description as well as the link to this mastering studio if you want to make use of their services. Now before we listen to and have a look at the results, let's first discuss why we used external mastering for this track. Now for us as a band, there's two main purposes to mastering. One is to get the track up to the right level for the platform that we're using for distribution, which is streaming, but we also sometimes still want to put the tracks on the CD. And the second reason is that we want our track to sound good on a very wide range of playback systems. And we want it to sound competitive compared to other releases that are out there. For example, we don't want it to sound too bright or too muddy or too bass heavy. Well, obviously, especially that last part of mastering, I also try to make it happen during the mix by comparing it to reference tracks and I have Lots of videos on that and I'll link one up here. But at a certain point you've listened to your track so many times that you kind of lose perspective and it's hard to still listen to it objectively. So that's number one reason really, to get an unbiased, unprejudiced view of your track from somebody with fresh ears and not just somebody, but somebody who's actually used to listening to and working on a lot of different tracks. So we should have a very good overview on what's out there and how everything sounds nowadays and how he can make your track sound better and more competitive together with all the other tracks. Now the second reason is that he has a totally different listening environment. So for me, when I'm mixing, I'm listening mostly on these Adam speakers over here. And yes, I do do the car test, so I make a mix, I listen to it in the car and I listen to it on my stereo upstairs. But still the mastering engineer has a fully optimized listening environment that's ultimately very flat, so he can judge everything in your track much more precisely. Now in the last reason that I'll mention for going to an external mastering engineer is, well, the gear. I like gear. I have a lot of gear as well, but it's not comparable to the quality and the level of the gear that the mastering studio has that you just saw on that screen. And I really like the idea that my mix is run through some of that equipment to give it that final shine and some fairy dust that hopefully translates to an even better sound. Well, let's now have a listen to the results in Cubase where I'm comparing the master to the final mix that I did. So in this Cubase project, you're seeing only part of the track here because as of yet, this track is unreleased. So at the moment, we're only sharing part of the track. Once it's released, I'll put a link in the description again to the full track on Spotify or any of your other favorite streaming platforms. But the top track is the mix, and the bottom track is the master. And the master was about 2 dBs louder than my mix, which I also ran through a limiter, by the way, to get it up in level a bit for the guys of the band to listen to. So I compensated for that by lowering the fader by 2 dB. So it should be kind of fair to compare these two versions of the same track. So we'll listen to this part of the track, 
and I'll switch between my mix and the final mash for a couple of times so you can hear the differences. And I think you will clearly hear the differences, even on YouTube. Start with my mix. Out of dark, take me apart, ready to dive. I'm just trying to find the light. And I am holding on. I am holding on. Engrave your heart, rip me apart, man, I'm alive. I'm just trying to find the light. So to me, the master sounds much more open. Most notably, you can hear this in the top end, I think. And I really like the changes that he did. Now, if you want to listen to this segment in a bit more detail in your own door without all the YouTube compression, I also made it available for download, both my mix version as well as the master. And then I compensated for loudness already. So they should be at approximately the same level. Well, let's actually have a look at these changes in a slightly more scientific way by using the TC Finalizer mastering application. So this is the TC Finalizer application, which is an application that you can use for mastering a track. And I sometimes use this application to do a quick mastering of, for example, rehearsal recordings. Or this is actually also the application that I use to up the level of the mix of the track that you just heard. Because it has a very nice limiter and it has lots of very nice other tools as well. But that's not what we're going to use the application for now. So I'm going to turn off a number of modules here so that you see the metering a bit better because it also has some nice metering, which I want to use to compare the master to my mix. Because I have already imported the master, which is in slot B, which is the green line that you're seeing. And I've also imported my mix as a reference track, which is the purple line. Now normally B would be the track that you're mastering with all the effects and A would be the track that you're mastering without the effects. But as you can see, I turned off all the effects. There's only a limiter in this chain and it's turned off. So we're only using this application now to compare the master and the mix. Master is green, mix is purple. Now we're currently looking at the AVG curve, the average spectral curve. And that basically means that you're looking at the frequencies horizontally and what the level of the frequencies is when you average it out over the entire track. And the entire track is now actually just the little part that I'll let you listen to just now. And this basically gives me a little insight into what the mastering engineer did to my mix. For example, you see over here that the green line is a little bit above the purple line. So apparently the mix was boosted a bit in this frequency region around yeah, 200 to 50. So still low mids, I guess. The mix was lowered a bit in quite a large mid band from 500 till around 3k so the mix was raised a bit in the high end and all of these moves is i think what finally gave it a more open sound that uh, you so clearly heard when comparing the tracks now another nice view that this application has is the sdc which is the spectral dynamic contour and i think this is quite innovative because i've not seen this in any other application yet because it basically indicates for every frequency what the level is of that frequency in the entire track. For example, the top line indicates that for 100% of the time, so for the whole track, the level of that frequency is below where the top line is. So the maximum level of a certain frequency can be seen at the top line, but that's only the maximum frequency for a certain amount of time during the track. That's not like it's boosted like there all of the time. Now you see six of these lines and the bottom line indicates what the lowest level of a certain frequency is somewhere in the track. Now the middle line over here, this one, this indicates that 50% of the time the level of these frequencies are below this line. So in this way you can actually see compression because if the lines are very close together for a certain frequency, it means that there has been heavy compression and squashing in that area. And if the lines are further apart, the track is very dynamic because the top level of the frequency is indicated by the top line, but sometimes also that frequency is at a very low level in the track. And what I can now do is I can switch between my reference track and my master. You're now looking at the spectral dynamic contour of the master. And using my keyboard, I can now switch to looking at the reference track, which is my mix. So if you switch back between these, you can see also what the changes are in 
compression of certain frequencies. Now, obviously, you're also seeing the changes that we already saw in the EQ curve. For example, the low mids were boosted, the whole mids were lowered in the master, and the highs were raised in the master. And again, that's what you're seeing here. But what I'm also seeing is that there was not any really very heavy substantial compression in any band, because I'm not really seeing that the lines get closer together in certain points, at least not a lot. Anyway, just wanted to show you this uh, very interesting metering in this application, because right now I'm using it to compare two tracks, but normally you can also use this metering to see the effects of your processing in the spectral dynamic contour curve. So I hope you found this interesting, a little look and peek into the master of the track that we made in the new song production series. So if you like this video or find it useful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and ring the little bell icon if you want to get notified when I release another video. Now next up on your top right here is a video on how I did my own mastering of a track that was mixed by our bass player. So have a look at that, enjoy and see you soon. Out of the dark, take me apart, ready to die. I'm just trying to find